Hello, welcome to Everything Distributed. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting aspect of a distributed system. So that is what could go wrong. It's actually very different from what you normally would expect if you only write some software or applications on top of a single machine. And the talk is based on the, this article, Eight Fallacies of Distributed System. It's by Victor. He revisited a fallacy kind of document proposed by Peter and some, um, some others as some microsystem roughly like 20 years ago. But before we go into details, there are actually lots of different models for distributed computing. So the first thing we want to ask is that what kind of model you are talking about? What is the scenario of your distributed system? What kind of things are you dealing with? If you remember from last time, my definition for distributed system, you have three elements. You have a collection of entities. They need to have some form of communication and they want to solve some task. And today, actually, we are going, only going to focus on the first part. We have a collection of computation entities and some kind of communication. And this is a very simple model. And I would say that that's the most common model that's used in industry. It's kind of, uh, you can think of, of that as a simple abstraction for the internet. It's called message passing. So now you a uh, computing entity can be think of some machine or servers or your laptop, something that can communicate and something that can compute and store. And then the way you do the communication is that you can send a message that I send to the other. For example, in this case, this machine can send a message to this guy and this machine can send to uh, this guy, okay? And that's why we call it message passing. And that's a very simple model for internet. So in this particular message and passing model, the article, the article described eight fallacies that I practitioner, not just practitioner, but like people without too much experience, we assume that, okay, I can do whatever I want. But in reality, it's a very different. Lots of things can go, go wrong. And then actually, if you look at it, most of these fallacies uh, depend on the network side. Okay, so the network is reliable, latency is zero, bandwidth is infinite, the network is secure, topology doesn't change, and there's only one administrator, transport cost is zero, the network is homogeneous. Okay, so why is that? And then, oh, sorry. And then I, if you read the article, you will find out that actually this are only uh, hold for message passing model. Later on, we will see that other kind of a distributed computing model that will have a different kind of errors or failures, okay? Then at this point, you might say that, okay, if the model have I all this kind of weird thing, why do we still need to have model? And this by George Box is that we have tons of different model and actually all of them are wrong, but like some of them are useful if you use the right abstraction. And then if you think about it, computer science, what is that? It can be viewed as a science of abstraction. We want to create the right model. You can think about a right API. So to, to kind of uh, simplify the model and then so that we know how to come up with appropriate mechanism to solve it, to come up by kind of generalized techniques. And if you remember the computational thinking, that's the first step. We want to have a precise abstraction and precise model. And then this quote is from Dijkstra. It's that you might think that the model or being abstract that is sometimes too vague, but that's totally wrong. We want to have a simple model so that we can abs be absolutely precise, okay? However, that's uh, only when you come up with the solution. When you come, when you like kind of solve the, or like when you want to implement something in practical systems, sometimes you need to go deeper to look get inside that like, what's behind the model. So message passing model on paper in theory is very simple. 
But if you open it up in practical system, how do we implement this kind of message passing? The most popular one is by like this TCP IP framework. So when we just said, okay, this machine, this machine can send some message to this machine. What we are actually doing is that a whole suite of a protocol starting from like this like kind of hardware layer and we have link layer protocol and IP layer and we have transport layer. Here we use TCP and then we have application. Okay, so when we draw the line in this theoretical model, we are actually thinking about application can talk to application. But you need to go all the way down and then go to that kind of switch or router to the other machine. And then that's something behind the model we are dealing with. And if in order to master distributed system, you need to be able to comfortably to work in like both theoretical kind of abstract model. And sometimes if you need to debug something or like kind of optimize the mechan uh, your system, your application, you also need to be comfortable with the underlying techniques and underlying protocol. So all this a fallacy can be actually explained by this simple figure by TCP IP. First, network is reliable, but any component here or any kind of uh, protocol use here can fail. So network is never reliable. And then latency is never zero because you need to traverse like multiple components. And then because the hardware is limited and then you have, may have like tons of traffic. So bandwidth is never infinite. And network is not secure because if you consider wide area network, if you send something and then it might be intercepted by like something in the middle, you might have a man in the middle attack, all kinds of different things. And then here I just draw one route. However, topology might be different because like if you think about IP layer, there's no control for like what kind of route you want to take. Sometimes you might go from A to B to C, but like the other time you might go from A to D to C. Topology actually changes. And then because like there are so many different components and then usually there's, on, there's more than one administrator, you never are going to have a full picture of the distributed systems that you are dealing with. And that's why it's so fun to deal with. And also because like you have so many different components or so your transport transport cost is never zero and then the cool thing about distributed system in particular in this case about the internet is that kind of plug and play style as long as you satisfy the interface satisfy the api the definition you can plug anything you want in there and then different hardware different kind of protocol have their own uh, limitation so network is never homogeneous so when you try to implement something, you need to keep this a fallacy in mind. Otherwise, that it's very easy to come up with something that might work well in, on paper, but it's never going to look good in practice. So what do we do? Okay. And then actually, the implica implication of this a fallacy is very kind of scary or very daunting. There are lots of theoretical kind of impossibility result implied by all this fallacy. The one of the most uh, popular one is called CAT theorem. It's that, that roughly speaking, you have consistency, availability, partition tolerance. You can only choose two. And then the other very, very important one is called FLP result. It's that it, it's impossible to solve consensus in a synchronous system with one crush failure. So I know that this doesn't really make any sense right now, but we are going to revisit all this later. Okay. And then in practical system, there are also lots of uh, instance, lots of different kinds of failures in real world. And I recommend you to read this uh, very nice survey by Peter and Kyle. And actually, I think that maybe two or three days ago, we also seen, we have also seen that this kind of wide uh, area, this uh, internet failure due to link there three, I think. That's, uh, that's uh, very interesting because we are dealing with unreliable network and anything could fail. So like, like in the survey by uh, Peter, there are 
eight sections and they document that kind of popular network instance in practical system. And here, I just want to mention one, it's by Jeff Dean, the Google fellow. He mentioned that I, although like this number is quite old right now, but I, I think that as the, their scale becomes larger and larger, the, the thing happens here, the failure will only get worse and worse, okay? So back in like 2009, they said that from their observation, the first year of a new Google cluster, and then like, that's entirely new machine, new setup. You are still seeing tons of like kind of network failure. You have network rewiring. You have router need to reload and then failure. And then you have a like, minor 30 second blitz because of the domain name service. So like in order to, to have your distributed system running smoothly, you need to be able to design something that kind of either identify this kind of failure or tolerate this kind of failure. And later on, we will see some of the techniques on how to deal with this. Okay, so the takeaway for today is that we have eight fallacies and most of them are due to the, the network uh, is not be due to the fact that the network is reliable because it goes through lots of different components. And then the second one is that we need to be uh, comfortable to switch between different model. Like sometimes we want to be a very precise, abstract, simple model so we can come up with a solution. However, sometimes that we also need to deal with the underlying engineering kind of tool enable to optimize your system or enable to debug your system. And then we also see that what's the implication of unreliable network. And then that occurs in both theory and practice. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you.